Hello and welcome to the 12th episode of Shopify Kryptonite, the official Woolman vlog with Teemu and Mikko. Hello Mikko. Hello, hello. Let's jump into the tip of the week because we forgot to do it in the last episode. So what do you have for us this week? This is a big one. So if you are a Shopify Plus merchant, then July is your month. No summer breaks. Finally, the performance dashboard is rolling out for all Plus merchants. So hopefully by the end of July, all Shopify Plus merchants will have the early access to that performance dashboard, which will then like give you additional data um, and maybe my heads up here will be to, to follow Shopify plus updates on that and there is a very good blog post that actually then like highlights all the benefits this performance dashboard board will give you and we can even uh, um, share the link here so you will find it below so that's something really hot for all of those who are like really serious in direct to consumer e-commerce this is a big one. Perfect. It's been a feature that we've been waiting for, and I think it's been kind of out there for already almost a year. So good to finally have it as a live feature. Well, it's going to be pop up, going to be popping up soon. Uh, episode number twelve, and the topic is the customer lifetime value. Really interesting stuff. I think that I would consider myself as a beginner merchant so i i know the concept of customer lifetime value and how you kind of play around with it but miko could you enlighten us all what is customer lifetime value how how we how, how we should measure it and then what kind of role it's it's playing when we uh grow to be bigger as a as a merchant Absolutely. My pleasure. One of my absolute favorite topics. So in e-commerce, few things are important. One thing is that what is your customer acquisition cost, which then means that how much money you are willing to put into customer acquisition, which channels you are willing to use, how much does it cost for me to get one new client. However, the basic issue with this is that all of your clients aren't equal. And I give this as an example that all, not all of the people are like equal. If you compare to persons, everyone is unique. And same goes in e-commerce. So there are cl clients that are purchasing from you, but some are purchasing once, some are purchasing one small item. And then there are those who are bringing back money. They are reg regular visitors, or they are those who are spending lots of money. Um, and they, in many cases, are more valuable for you so if you are then like trying to count your profits how much money i'm making where are my margins typically they come from such uh, clients who are spending more money who are re returning as visitors um, and in e-commerce you should then like sort of like focus on those uh, how does it sound them are you still with me i'm, I'm still with you uh I'm trying to do a sketch in my head. So if I go into the Shopify backend, if I open up any customer, I I, I do see their lifetime value from there as well. Uh, if I can see the number of orders that they've done, but what kind of tools we should be using when we when we have hundreds or thousands or even tens of thousands of customers? Right. Back in the day, still like a few years ago, I did do lots of manual calculations, <laughs> Excel and all sorts of tools. I was spending time a lot. When I started at Woolman, I did a, a customer analysis with very complicated CLW calculations for our clients. And that took me like half a week. Um, and then the client was like, yeah, thank you. Come again. Uh, it was like a very short visit and they didn't really use that data. Uh, luckily, nowadays you can find pretty good Shopify applications that are like helping you with the whole thing. So there are options such as like segments and live timely, which will then try to cover this, this topic and try to help you out. But even before jumping to a, a application that is sort of like helping you, you should try to understand the matter. What does it mean for my business? As example, if you are selling goods, which you sell just once. In my case, when I used to work for finishbaybox.com, 
you bought the box mostly once. So there was no word of actually like calculating customer lifetime value. But in typical cases where you're selling like lots of goods, you are forming a relationship with the client. Then these CLV calculations are very, very uh, important. Um, and from there, you should have like basic understanding, trying to think that which are more valuable clients, how do I calculate it? Is it so that it's a client that is returning? Is there an estimation that these or these clients will burn more money than the others? And how should I actually pay attention to this customer group? Does it mean that I will do different kind of marketing for them? Do I have some sort of like whip newsletters, additional items, uh, whatever I will come up with so that I will serve these clients sort of like better or with more uh, dignity than the others. I always say that that doesn't mean that uh, all of your clients aren't valuable or you shouldn't sell your products to anyone. Or it might be that a, a client that was spending little money when she or he then finally graduated can become a very valuable client. So that's always good to keep keep on mind. But we are trying to look at this with, with like shorter time period, usually talking about a year or a couple of years, and then trying to estimate that which are the clients where I should put my marketing efforts to. Um, and then the basic question here is, which is actually where the majority of growth consultants are just like escaping and running away when they are saying that, hey, a, a merchant we have calculated, this is a list of your most valuable clients, 150 clients here. And then the merchant asks back that, should I find like similar type of clients? How do I find them? And um, you were talking about a great client mass, but I only have 150. What should I do? That's exactly the thing that I was planning to ask you the next. So what kind of volumes we should be actually having in the whole kind of customer database. And when we see those segments, how does the, uh, the play kind of start from there? Right, e-commerce is all about mass. If you have more mass, you, have, you can do very fancy stuff. But we've noted at least in Europe that the majority of merchants are running like smaller or at least like mid-range stores when the issue comes there that then you end up having like very narrow or small customer segments uh, and it's not a hopeless situation when you start to have like hundreds a couple of hundred of clients who have like similar type of uh, behavior then you already should start doing like more targeted messaging or and doing this kind of like more advanced segmentation but but the thing is that in most cases you cannot simply focus only on those most valuable clients then you start or you should go towards the usual like big middle mass uh, they are like various type of clients who are burning somewhat money or some have been a bit inactive lately they are not the ones that are bringing just the pocket money in your store but they are not the perfect clients and then you sh should try to find out potential leads from there which are the ones that i can nurture so that they will one day be in my like high clv bracket uh, and that's something that requires much more attention much more creativity and it's sort of like tough because you cannot know what will happen you need to work hard and then you hope that this mass would uh, behave in a, in a certain way um so trying to put these uh clients to a couple of different kind of like brackets most valuable potentially most valuable in the future uh low value and then try to think that what kind of messages you should uh, uh try to direct to those and then also what can I do when it comes to campaigns and, and all the all the sales efforts I'm doing? Should should we play a game and then figure out a, a kind of example case? So if we Definitely. would have let, let let's say we have three thousand customers that have, have made a purchase from our shop. From those three hundred uh, three thousand customers, let's say that two hundred have been big spenders. They've spent they've done more than four orders and they've spent over 500 euros in our shop 
So we have the high value 200 person group there. And then we have maybe thousand customers who have made their first purchase. And then we have something, the mass in between there. So I think with that calculation, there's roughly one and a half thousand, one, 1,800 customers that have done two or three purchases, but they're not in the one buyer group or they're not in the VIP group. How, how I would tackle that kind of situation? Excellent case. So from our perspective, you should always look at clients coming back. We have some merchants that are calculating that the actual client relationship begins after a person has, has purchased three times or four times or five times. So how should I make sure that that person would come back? Uh, that's, the, that's the basic question. And if you have this like this kind of like size that you have 3000 and then you have a, a couple of hundred max as your like high CLV spenders, then you should try to look at this like mid range. What I can do for this mid range are there different kind of behavior? Then you, if wish you can put them to different brackets when it comes to average order value or their most recent purchase. Uh, very common way is to is to look at those average order values, uh, uh, doing like two separate brackets, and for the better ones that have been spending more money, trying to make them to push the order in a certain time window, such as two weeks. Uh, give them a discount code, uh, give them something extra, one surprise product, whatever, and try to push to that, that next next purchase to, to happen. Um, and that's been very successful, especially when done right, when done with good messaging, either in email automation or in paid marketing. And when calculating then like afterwards, it's actually a good way to give a slight discount or a, a slight push to get that person uh, to, to, to purchase. So that's never out of the reach. And even giving like tiny discounts here and there um, makes makes your business more valuable than that you would have a big amount of just like simply passive, passive clients. Sounds that this is, uh, this is something that will take a lot of energy. Maybe yep. it, it's, it might be even a bit terrifying or, or complicated. Uh, how would you encourage all of our customers and Shopify merchants to kind of get started with the customer life value, lifetime value measurements and then kind of leading their business with the numbers and the data that they can get from there? Right. If you only have the resources, you should get a person who has done this before. So we are offering those growth services. We know um, many former existing merchants who are willing to help with those. So this is more complicated. Uh, there is like lots of math involved. Um, so definitely asking for help. And then there are some kind of like good case examples, even in Shopify and Shopify Plus blog where they are discussing this like major topic already uh, starting from 2015, 2016, where they are like trying to show you what uh, you can do in some of the cases. Um, but definitely like asking for help because this is pretty advanced um, uh, compared to many other things you can do on Shopify. But then again, usually this has always been like worth the investment. So if you then know how to better treat those customer segments, how you can then like expand your high CLV customer range. And that will be very positive when it comes to the turnover. So um, that's my, my strong recommendation. So, sounds good then like the first touch point that I had in, in the matter was that I started using the segments app, which was really enlightening. I could kind of see the customer data in a kind of easy brackets, the one-time purchases, when I'm most likely to lose those one-time buyers only. So which is kind of the, the window that I need to convert them to buy again and then again and again. But that's kind of the first step that I did as a merchant was that those one-time purchases and the window, and I started targeting them really, not massively, but uh, in a, a small way that uh, the messages, the campaigns, the discounts or whatever were targeted for those customers only. I could do even the retargeting 
with the pixel for, for those customers only. And it's it's been converting pretty well because I can speak to these persons in a way that they know they know that we know that they've already made their first purchase and then we would like them to buy again. And then I've been also trying to take a really good uh, care of the VIP customers because those are big spenders mm -hmm. and and they're really important because they are as I've said many times, my my shop is it's and my business it's it's rather small. So if we have those loyal customers that are spending money, kind of giving them gifts or giving them better discounts or, or products for them only, is, is something that I'm I'm truly happy about that we've done. Am, am I doing the right things? What do you think? Absolutely. And uh, like CLV is, is just like a form of doing like estimations and trying to understand your customer much better. But in the end, this comes to a very basic level to show that the merchant cares and understands. You want to have that personal relationship with these clients. You want to make sure that you serve those clients based on their needs and behavior and this when done right will actually like help with both of those um, and if i want to just like wrap this up then two or three basic questions for usa merchant uh, who are my most valuable clients how can i find that out how many of my clients have been like active or passive what is my average order value with already those you can try to start uh creating that uh, that kind of like understanding that hey what should i do how how to plan things so um that should help you for the for the future perfect thank you this was again inspiring i think I'm going to go and open up my segments app and do some newsletters with Clayview that's going to be really targeted for the weekend. It's, it's always inspiring, inspiring to, to get the ideas. Uh, anything you want to shoot out in the other end or should we call this a day and then time to have our, our summer holidays? <laughs> well, maybe just as a final notice that don't focus only on the most valuable clients they are most important for your business but especially if you're a small business then have a look at the mid-range try to make sure that you are treating also those uh, so that's something that i would like to adjust when it comes to all these growth consultants helping with, with clv calculations so for the small merchants inside merchants you have to think about the middle mass as well perfect Thank you a lot, Mikko. Uh, I think episode number 12 is coming out sometime in July and we're going to be having a well-earned vacation. But we're going to be back in August with the new episode of, of, of Shopify Kryptonite. So thank you for watching and see you in August. My pleasure. Good sales. Take care.